I've worked in various aspects of the industry. I've worked in a house of domination. I worked in a wrestling house, which was only a wrestling, a wrestling fetish, very fun. I've worked in strip clubs, uh, but right now I work as an independent escort. And for me, I greatly enjoy it. Uh, it feels like fun sometimes. Sometimes it feels like real healing work. I mean, for me, it really feels like a social service. That's the way I view what I do. You know, if you cast a net on the street of any given day, it's not that all those men would see working women, but that is what the pool looks like. They're really, they really are every man. And, um, and they're overwhelmingly polite and everything. You know, of course, every once in a while you get somebody who you don't get along with. Um, and gratefully, I can be selective and choose who I want to keep a, as a client. And that's really an important part of it, is that the, the freedom of choice, it's, it's my choice to do this. I find it way more demeaning to, to in, insinuate that, um, that women might not know the choice that they're making or, or might not know if they're happy or not or have a false consciousness or not be using their brains to look at their lives and go, what really makes sense for me based on my circumstances? Of course, the issue of trafficking that is, is concerning as a global issue stemming from poverty and there are already laws in place to, to attack uh, trafficking and to, and to attack rape. And so, you know, resources need to be spent targeting those areas as opposed to resources being spent targeting consensual adults um, doing transactional sex. So I think that it's very problematic and quite dangerous, particularly for the most vulnerable working women that they're trying to criminalize the clients. It makes for much shadier business and we can see that in Sweden where they've brought in that law and um, of course now in Northern Ireland. The fact is even places like Denmark and Finland, they have, they have reviewed the law and they've decided not to do it based on what they've seen in Sweden, which is that certainly the amount of working women has stayed steady and for example, in, in Norway, where they have it as well, um, Pro Centret is, a, is the main help center for sex workers. And um, they, what they have found is that women are working in worse conditions and are suffering more violence since the law has been brought in. Very clearly, we don't want them to criminalize the clients. And we're not just saying, don't criminalize the clients. We're saying, we have a better solution. It would make for a better industry than we have here already. And it's actually further decriminalizing the industry. So that's the way that it is in, in New Zealand. Um, the industry is, is dealt with in, in a business sector as opposed to the criminal sector. And they're finding that that's um, it's quite successful there and making for um, there to be able to be more organization amongst the women and better health services for them, etc. So it's not, we're not looking for how it is in Holland or how it is in Germany, the legalization, because um, that the way that it's done there is still dealt with in a criminal sector and the big business of it uh, still can allow for organized crime to, to thrive. Certainly organized crime thrives with criminalizing the clients. We want neither of those things. We want decriminalization, full decriminalization, as it is in New Zealand. And so we're really we're, we're, um, asking for the government to, to look at that as the, as the best way forward. You know, it's not about if this is, um, if this is exploitative or, <clears throat> or empowering. That's not really the, the issue. It's that re regardless of that, working women deserve basic human rights and labor rights, it's a labor issue, so it is.